Take your Bibles, please. We're going to be starting in Psalm 139, the 139th Psalm. How many of you are doing okay? How many of you love it when we as a local church can come before the Lord? You know, there's times you just you stop and you just meditate. Think about that. I think of these four walls. You know, there's, there's all kinds of buildings in this nation, in the world. And all kinds of stuff that goes on inside buildings. But there is absolutely nothing that matches this. When we take ourselves from, as it were, being in this building to being at the throne of grace, to being before Him, studying His Word. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. As we come this morning, why don't we once more, let's go to the Lord. I, uh, I've had a good time with this. I've struggled with it some. I've wondered, Lord, is this really where you're taking us? I believe it is. And so let's stop and let's ask that, Lord, whatever it might be, whoever it might be here, all of us really, when we open your word, when we open his word, there's something there for us. But I'm looking for something special. So, again, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we quiet our hearts. We come together as a local fellowship. We're so thankful for your word. It's complete. It's all we need when it comes to being taught. We are guided by your Spirit. Lord, I pray that in that guidance, even this morning, there would be comfort and, yes, even conviction as we look to your Word. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I, uh, I wasn't much into boxing when... Uh, when I was growing up, I, I do remember this back in, I think it was 1964. My dad and I were around the radio and we were listening to the Cassius Clay, who went on to be Muhammad Ali, but the Cassius Clay, Sonny Liston fight. Now, how many of you oldsters are out there and you remember that fight? Okay, very good. And I remember being there in mom and dad's bedroom and we're listening to the radio on that fight. Boy, that was... That was just really, really something. But there's another fight that took place actually just before and just after World War II. There's a fellow by the name of Billy Kahn, and he was fighting the champ, Joe Lewis. Now, Billy Kahn was about 25 pounds lighter than Joe Lewis, but Joe Lewis had a punch that would absolutely slay somebody. But Billy Kahn thought, I can get away from him. So the first time in 1941, they fought. And he's moving around. And from what I understand, toward the end of the fight, of the three judges, two of them were ready to vote in favor of Kahn defeating Lewis. But on the 13th round, Khan, feeling self-confident, got a little bit closer <laughs> to Joe Lewis. And there's a Greek term for that. Pow! And he went nighty-night. So in 1946, after World War II, they decided they're going to go, they're going to fight again. Well, there were some people, you know, that wrote on boxing and stuff, you know, the media types. They went to Joe Lewis and they're talking to him about the fight. And they said, well, now, what are you going to do? You know, the last time you fought, uh, Khan, he was able to move around and stuff and get away from your 
from your jabs and all that. Uh, what do you think about that? And according to the people that were there, Lewis responded in this way. He can run, but he can't hide. And it's, and it's stated that when Khan heard that, it terrified him. They went ahead and fought, and this time, in the eighth round, Khan went nighty-night. Joe Lewis connected, pow, that was it. So that phrase, he can run but he can't hide, has been used all over the place. Now, this is not exactly how you want to start your theology. <laughs> but I got to thinking about that phrase. And I'll explain why. You can run, but you can't hide. Now again, there's a reason, and I'll be explaining this. I don't want you to get immediately a negative attitude about the message, about getting into the Word of God this morning. But you'll see in several instances, we can run, but we can't hide. Now, the first place we're going to be going to for that is Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms. Look, if you would, please, at verse 1. This is, this is a wonderful thing. He knows us. O oh Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Now, notice this. He knows our every movement. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Now, if we're going to be remembered, we might be thinking about this. Somebody says something, somebody re remembers something that I said, that I did, or whatever. Well, how about, does anybody remember when you sit down or you stand up? Well, who wants to remember that? God does. In other words, what he's saying is this. Every movement that we make, God knows. Look at the next verse, or the last part of verse 2. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Not only does he know every movement, he knows every motive. What's going on in your mind? Folks, do you realize that the Lord knows the disposition of every heart in this building right now. Who it is that truly desires to listen to Him and who it is that can't wait for the preacher to quit. It's the truth. I'm here because I'm obligated, you know, if I don't come, you know, people think different, I was told to come, whatever. God knows that. But not only the movement and the motive, look at verse Three, thou compassed, compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. He knows our walk. In fact, not only does he know our walk, he knows our talk. Verse 4, for there is not a word in my tongue, but, O Lord, thou knowest it, all together. In fact, he knows our going and coming. Thou hast beset me behind and before. If I go this way, I'm going to meet him. If I turn around and decide to go the other way, pow, he's there. And laid thine hand upon me. Verse 6. Amen. That's right. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. You know, there's times you go through Scripture and it's like, you know, you want to teach it, preach it, share it with someone, and you come to this deep theological conclusion. I can't get my mind around this. I mean, it's like, I'll speak it, but Lord, we need you <laughs> to understand it. You know what we're seeing right now? You can run but you can't hide. 
Just a couple of other verses. Look at verses 7 through 11. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, (laughs) thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me. You will be engaged with me even there, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. In other words, death, distance, and darkness don't hide us. So, Praise God for that. We might try to run, but we can't hide. But you know something? There's also another aspect of that. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, we read Paul in writing to the church at Philippi said this, Wherefore, speaking of God, speaking of Christ, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, listen to this, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. But it doesn't stop there. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. See, there's people that the last thing they want to think about is some God in heaven. Not only is every living being, every human that has ever lived and is living now and will live, not only is everyone going to be seeing God, they will be confessing who He is. Romans chapter 14. Oh, listen. Again, goes on the same. Verse 11, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. But now listen to this. Not only are they going to be confessing who He is, verse 12, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now, praise God. For the Christian, we rejoice in this. He knows me. I can't go anywhere. And he not only doesn't know it, but he's the fact that he's with me. But here's something to stop and think about. When it comes to this idea of you can run, but you can't hide, every one of us are going to give account. Now, praise God, if we've trusted Christ as our Savior, guess what? Our sins are taken care of. But there's this thing called the Bema Seat, and we will be giving account. Then for the unbeliever, there's this thing called the Great White Throne Judgment. And after the accounting of all the sin, the Bible says there in Revelation 20, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, Joe Lewis might not have been thinking theology when he said that about his opponent. But the fact is, he spoke something that really we can take and give far greater consequence to. In our minds, we can run. In our actions, we can flee. But we can't hide. So I got to thinking about this. You know something? We gather as God's people. And we need to encourage each other. Since we're going to engage God directly one day and we're always engaging Him now and He is ever watching us, then we need to encourage each other in that activity. 
Dr. Bob Sr., Bob Jones Sr., who founded the university named after him, said that when he was 11 years old, the thing that got him, that, that really made him stop in his tracks, he was 11 years old. And this thought suddenly came to him, I am going to live somewhere forever. I had better learn how to live. That's called responsibility. So, you know, people gather together today in different places here and there, and their main objective is to just forget what their problems are, and they'll drink or they'll do drugs or whatever, or they'll escape into something, and they want to, they, they just want to forget. We don't have to have that attitude. We are, we can embrace the one that loves us. Every person, no matter how hard they scheme, run, resist, or deny, will stand before God. Do you believe that? You better. Because I'll take God's word over my belief anytime. Anytime. Now, we're here. Because of our Lord. John 1 tells us, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It's amazing that there are people, and have been, over time and around the world that have denied Him, and they're here because of Him. Paul wrote to the church at Colossae and said this, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, literally are held together. We're here right now and don't fly apart because of his power. That's called being close. You know, you know we, we'd like to deny it or we'd like to just kind of escape it a little bit. You can't. You can't. Now, here's the thing that we've got to consider. There are folks that wind up having challenges in their life. You ever had a mean challenge in your life? If you've had a mean challenge in your life, raise your hand. Yeah. It's, it's commonplace. And sometimes those challenges are the little door that opens up where the wicked one comes in and his conniving sniveling little way. I don't know how else I can describe it. I'm telling you, listen, we're going to have a little FBT section at the Great White Throne. No, you know, Just before that, we're going to have our own little place and we're going to do the cheer. I mean, we're going to pass out the popcorn. We're going to do the wave when Satan is cast into the lake of fire. I can't wait for that. That dirty little scumbag Seriously, this, this is true. This, this, true story. Did you hear about the preacher? He, he had a rough past. He had a really rough past. And because of that, he hated devil, the devil. Well, he got saved and he became a preacher. <laughs> and so he gets up and one day he starts preaching on the devil and gets so mad, he starts cussing. He's calling the devil every day, and all of a sudden he realizes, oh my soul, what have I done? He hung his head, he got away from the pulpit, he walked and left the building. And everybody just sat there. Well, slowly, one of the deacons stood up and came to the pulpit and said, well, folks, you know, <laughs> we know the background of our pastor, and it was kind of rough, and he said, you know, quite honestly, what the pastor just said about the, said about the devil, I, I, I kind of think we all feel that way about him. And we do. I hate the works of the devil. But you know, there's one thing more than I hate. And that's the works of Mike Rogers. How many of you have ever prayed this? Lord, save me from myself. Yeah. So see, this is why we're here, 
And on the one hand, we rejoice, but on the other hand, it's like, whoa, we can run, but we can't hide. We can do that. You can run, but you can't hide from God's eyes. He sees us. Hebrews 4.13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. He knows our hearts. Second Chronicles 16.9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Listen, praise God for this. If your heart is dedicated to him, He knows it. He not only knows it, He's watching. He is here. Oh, my soul. You know, sometimes our... our, This is very deep theologically. Our our, our faith goes this far and goes... Because we're not grasping this. Our God is as much in this building right now, as he was 2,000 years ago in Galilee. He says, lo, I am with you always. I think he keeps his word. I think he does it. He knows what we do. (laughs) And we might not say amen to that. Proverbs 5.21, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. I can hear him now. Rogers, you're preaching. Be careful what you say. And so, seriously, that's true. Because the Bible says, in a multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. That's why I hold my breath when Brother Whiteside gets up here and says, I have four points. See, every sermon is supposed to have three points. If you get a fourth one, be careful about the bonus one. Right, brother? Okay, there we go. Proverbs 15.3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Oh, okay, I can handle that. Wait a minute. Beholding the evil and the good. Now, to some, when kids hear that, and maybe some adults, they think, oh yeah, I used to sing that about Santa. No, we're not worried about Santa. We're worried about what does the Lord see. Not only the outside, but the inside. Jeremiah 17.10, I the Lord search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Now, listen, got our Bibles open. I mean, obviously, I'm reading Scripture from my notes here, but we've got our Bibles open. We're listening to Scripture. Every little detail, every nuance in every heart. Seriously, my heart, as I share what I believe God has given me, and our hearts, with what we do with it, God knows. The Lord knows. That's why, you know, we need to take this exercise in worship and humbling ourselves before the Lord so that we come more to a, we come to a greater understanding that He knows us. And We can run, but we can't hide. So Lord, help me to live. Help us to live like you know everything and you're coming to us with the full understanding of what your Scripture has told us what to do, what to avoid, how to live. That's what we need to hear. Proverbs 17.3, the finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. But wait a minute. But the Lord trieth the hearts. He'll put us in a situation. How many of you found yourself in kind of a quasi 
difficult situation this last week. How many of you just skated through and everything was fine and you were just copacetic and no problems? Yeah, right. So he gives us a situation. Now, we might get irritated. You ever been to one of those things where it's like every red light is attacking you? Somebody out there knows where you are. We want a life of green lights. <laughs> Let somebody else have the red light. I just want to keep going. And then just as you're getting there, beep, the light turns yellow. And for a moment, it's like, I want to be like somebody I just saw the other day. They just punched it and went right through. And then you, no, 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 ain't doing that. And then we stop. But the next light will be green, and it's not. The next light will be green, and it's not. We want stuff like that. And you know, there's people that actually get irritated. Now, come on. Confess. How many of you have ever gotten irritated by a red light? You're driving down your favorite road and suddenly you realize they're breaking ground and it's not to put in another street light. It's to put in a street light. That's a problem. Somebody needs to run for office and just tell them, put in a bunch of those circle thingies, you know? No? Okay. Now, 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 now wait a minute. Listen, listen. This is church. We're, th this, this is not a city council meeting. But, but, you know, the, the, the point is this. We wind up having things in our lives that are irritating. Sometimes the things are other people. But we never go there, do we? Yeah, we need to have the, you know, we need to have the invitation right now. We're not going to hear the rest of this message unless we get things. Listen, point is this. And the year, and the times that we see coming up, you know, if, if we're not living with the fact that God is with us and we can rest in Him, there's going to be things more than red lights and maybe people that irritate us at times. There's going to be more than that that gets to us. There's going to be more. You see, not only can we not run from God's eyes, we can't run from Bible prophecy. We can't do it. Now listen, we're not of the world. If, if, you're, if, if you're a child of God, you've trusted Christ, we're citizens of heaven. Glory! We are waiting for His coming. We're waiting for that time when we're with Him. But, the fact is, we're in this world right now. Now, every once in a while, there's a, there's a place, there's a couple of people I like to listen to sometimes on uh, YouTube. The, the, the term today is they're a prepper. You know, what do you do when all of civilization starts to fall apart? So, you know, you build the bunker underneath your house, you know, you do what, you get 14 years worth of food, you know, and you cram it in your garage, you know, do whatever. I get to thinking about this. They talk about having a bug out bag. So you've got that backpack and you've got food in there and, you know, some water and stuff like that. And I've thought about this before because I watch these guys and they, you know, there's some interesting things there, but then I get to thinking, okay, all of a sudden there's panic in River City you grab your bug out bag, you're gone. Then what? You know, sooner or later, you've got to face reality. You've got to face society. You can't hide from what God is doing. Now, you ever stop to consider this, that our God is powerful enough that while He is operating in the world and, and seeing the world come together that he can also take care of us. 
2 Timothy 3.1. We can't get past this. This know also, in the last days perilous times shall come. But 2 Timothy 3.1 does not negate Matthew 6. Take no thought saying what we shall eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed. God takes care of his own. Amen? So let's just stop and consider that. I'm reading a book right now entitled The Great Reset. It's interesting. There are people out there, there's elitists out there, and they're, they're trying to determine, you know, how they can make the world operate the way they want to. <laughs> and I just get to thinking, you talk about a great reset. Guys, you haven't seen anything yet. Just wait till the Lord comes and His feet touch down there on the Mount of Olives and He reigns for a thousand years. But then even after that, you talk about a great reset. The Bible talks about Him creating a new heaven and a new earth. That's the reset I'm waiting for. They can, they can do all they want. They can run, but they can't hide. We'll talk about that in a moment. But there's these people. We've just got to figure it. 2 Timothy 3, again, but later in verse 13, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We're going to keep looking at the world and going, what in the world are you thinking about? How is it that in a recall, a man who is black running for governor is called the face of white supremacy? How about this? When somebody stands up, you know, what's going on in this, in, in, in this election it's, it's a matter of life and death. And we're going, yeah, it is. But he's not talking about eliminating abortion. We are. That's a baby. That's called murder. You can't talk about abortion, that's politics. No, it's not! Thou shalt not kill. Amen? Then you hear about a dad. He stands up for his daughter who was raped by a trans who claims to be a girl but acted like a boy and yet the dad is the bad guy, not the person that did the crime. Folks, something's wrong here. I, I love this. The same people that cry out, defund the police, then they're all for the people that are destroying the community. You see, there's stuff going on out there. It's like, this is, this, this is crazy. This is nuts. I love this. We're inclusive, <laughs> except for you that believe that, you know, there's only two genders. Get out of here. You know, I, I could go on and on. Second Peter 3, Peter was led of the Holy Spirit to, to write this. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. If you scoff at God and His Word and the truth that is found in our Savior, you're going to look at things that are right and biblical and go, ha! And that's exactly what the world is doing. Folks, we can try to run. We can move to another state. But guess what you're going to find in the other state? Exactly. People that just believe the same way as they do. Maybe there's not that many of them. But listen, sooner or later, it just, it, it just comes. So the question is, what do we do? We can run. But we can't hide. Well, you know what? We've got to get serious about this. 
And this is serious. Because Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew 28, And Jesus came and spake unto them, All power, the Greek word for authority, Jesus used, all authority, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. You see, we can run, but we can't hide from God's call. We can't. Now, the classic example, you know, it's amazing. God puts great accounts in His Word to get us to understand, don't go that direction. When it comes to trying to run from God's call, who do we think about? Jonah. Jonah. You know, I'm, like, God said go this way, Pfft, uh-uh, I'm, I'm, I'm headed here. So I love what the Bible says, that he went down, boy did he ever. And he paid the fare, boy did he ever. And then God interceded. Now I'm not saying that God's going to, every time somebody flees from the call of God is going to go through something like that. But listen, if you're born again, you have to constantly resist the call of the Holy Spirit that, look, you have what the world needs. You have what the world needs. What do we do with it? What do we do with it? The Bible says Jonah got up and fled. I hope and pray we don't do that. Again, remembering what we read earlier in Romans 14. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. God has put people in your life that I can't reach and vice versa. Praise God. Let's be thinking about this. I I, I, I love it. Tim Schmidt and I were talking yesterday. By the way, wasn't that a blessing last Sunday? I'm telling you, I love Tim's preaching. He's preaching over in Cortland today for uh, Dave Welch Sr. But I mean, that message on, on uh, John 3.16 And then Galatians 2.20, last Sunday evening, I I was just moved. That was a, last Sunday was a stunning day. But he was talking about, he says he heard a guy saying, he's called to be a missionary, but he's kind of, he's to himself, and it's, you know, kind of, I, 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 I find it hard to speak to people. So he said, this guy, gets himself into a habit of praying this, Lord, give me boldness for 15 seconds. I thought, well, you know, that's that's pretty good. So Tim said, he says, I find myself praying that. Lord, give me boldness for 15 seconds. You know, all pastors are not, you know, we, it, we have to pray that. Especially, you know, when they're six foot eight, and they have mother across their arm, and then it's crossed out with an arrow, you know, or something like that. Not exactly the easiest person. Um, our, our young people, where I was growing up, the young men used to go down, and uh, the Vietnam War was going on there, and Camp Pendleton was down there in Southern California. And uh, so young men would go down, and... Uh, give the gospel. And uh, the, the fellow Hal Hamilton, that it was our youth man, incredible man of God. One day he looked out the bus and he saw his 12-year-old son talking to this big guy. And he's stumbling along as he's trying to show scripture. And he thought, oh, my soul, that guy is going to eat my son up and spit him out. And he's getting out of the bus just in time to see that big guy stop and bow his head and trust Christ. Because a little 12-year-old was giving him the gospel. 
All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore. I can ask you this. I know there are hands that are going to go up. How many of you know somebody that needs the Lord? You know several somebodies. I do too. It's great to share the word with them. Say, so, well, you know, they're not listening. God is in charge of his word. While you're speaking, the Holy Spirit's in there. Don't you worry about it. You just keep giving the word. Why? The last point. The world can run, but it can't hide. The Bible says in Psalm 19, The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. We know God has his testimony. All you have to look is straight up. Did you hear about the latest uh, telescope that just went up to take, take the place of the Hubble? The, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, listen to this. That thing cost $10 billion to build. It took 30 years. It's the size, when everything spread out, it's the size of a tennis court. It needs a five-layer sun shield to maintain the instruments at minus 388 degrees. It was lifted up, it was put into orbit on Christmas Day, about 930,000 miles out there orbiting the earth. But listen to what it can do. It's designed to have seven times more light gathering ability than the Hubble. It can view objects up to a hundred times fainter. Detect mid-infrared light beyond the visible spectrum. I can't wait to see what that's going to see. But just like the Hubble, you know what we're going to see? The heavens declare the glory of God. Mankind will look out there, wow! We'll look out there and go, praise God. My God did that. The same God that knows us. But it's not just the sky that speaks. There's the conscience. Romans 2, For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Well, now, wait a minute, though. Look, look at all people. You know, they're, they're doing all this wretched stuff. Yeah, First Timothy 4, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they got themselves to ignore what God put in their hearts. The world is doing that. But there's coming a time. Oh, my soul. Driving to church this morning, looking at, at, at houses, and you maybe do the same thing. You've thought, oh, my soul, what's going to happen when it all really starts to fall apart? Have you ever read the Revelation and it's like, I, I, I can't believe this. Just listen to this. Revelation 6. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. When she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven 
departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, you know, the ones that want to do the great reset, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman even, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? That's incredible. And then you get to Revelation 20. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Every human being that has ever lived, once again, will recognize this. You can run. See, there's something that we can't hide from right now. It's our phones. It's okay. Is it the same person? His name is Scam Likely. I, 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 get, I get that guy all the time. You know, it's just... What I, what I hate is when I slam my fist down here and my, 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 my watch wants to call him through my phone. Are you okay? Did you, know, you, did you fall? No, we're doing all right. You need to get saved, you know. But listen, there's coming that time when everyone is going to stand before him. Can, can, can we do this? Let, let's, let's do this. Let's recognize three points and then I'm done. Number one, the God that created you and pursues you, loves you. Number two, a life willfully separated from God will lead to separation forever. If you don't want salvation, if you don't want Christ, wow. But number three, learn the joy of number one before you suffer the consequences of number two. So, if we've trusted Christ, praise God, we know He loves us, He pursues us, He knows our downsitting and our uprising, and He's acquainted with all our ways. You know, if we can, if we can grasp that, and we can live like that, Boy, praise God, what could, do, what could God do in 2022? There's a good thing. What can God do in 2022? He can do a lot. He can do a lot. Now, y'all getting packed up right now. This is not good. You know, we're, we're going to be going before the Lord. We can run, but we can't hide. And we don't want to hide because he loves us. Amen? So as a local church, what do we do? Well, we're here to encourage each other. We're here to pray for each other. By the way, praise God when the church prays for each other, before the Lord. And reminding ourselves of number one, he who loves us and pursues us, what a life he's given us. If you're not saved, or if you're listening to this message and you don't know the Lord, oh my soul, come to know him. But if you do know him, let's rejoice in his pursuit. Let's pray. Heavenly